So, Richard, welcome to Fuse. It's a pleasure to have you on here. It's a really interesting time. Um, I've been I've been hearing about this report, analyzing PR KPIs, what the future of PR looks like. We will talk about that very shortly. But recently, you uh, returned to the name Released, and this is kind of the next uh, era of your organization. Give us the elevator pitch for your uh, firm. We are a tool that allows PR freelancers, agencies, and in-house teams to create visual activity reports. So I put it in the category of a coverage reporting tool, but um, coverage forms a small part, a small but vital part of what our customers report on. Obviously, these days, modern PRs want to showcase social media, the content they've created, all of the plethora of things that they do, and they need to do it in a much more kind of modern, professional, visual way. So that's what we uh, allow them to do with our platform. You know KPIs. You know um, the 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 way that we should be reporting things. I'll ask you a straight question. It's a question that I wondered about in the early 2000s when I was working in the space directly. Um, advertising value equivalent, is it the work of the devil? Well, that's a big question. And actually part of our research that we can talk about in a moment, I mean, we couldn't do a report on the most popular KPIs in PR without at least addressing this question. Um, and actually, as we may talk about in a moment, we, we kind of feel uniquely placed to answer it because the thing about our platform is that um, in addition to kind of sharing all these different types of content, the thing that our customers can do is they can create what we call custom KPIs. So what this means is within a report, they get to actually create and describe the different metrics that they want to measure themselves by unlike analytics tools, which provide them with charts and graphs. So it's all kind of custom. So that's actually, that's actually one, of the four, one of the parts of the research. And what we found was that um, back in 2015, which was the first year that we had a full year of data, about 18% of the reports that were created in that year featured one or more reference to AVEs. And we wondered what that would look like last year, because obviously in the meantime, there was a big campaign by Amic and the like to stamp it out and kill it completely. And um, so last year, that number was 6%, which is obviously far less, but still it does exist. And so um, we obviously have our own opinions on it, but we have actually spoken to quite a lot of customers about, about AV specifically. And it's been really interesting because um, they're always apologetic when they ask us about it. Do you, you know, how do we do AVs? I'm really sorry. Like, you know, it's not us. It's our new client or it's their executives that are, they're insisting on it. And we've told them we shouldn't use it, but, you know. And so our, our opinion is that AVs are obviously an inappropriate way to measure PR. Um, there's no there's no rhyme or reason for doing it this day and age. That's always our position. That's what we tell our customers. But we do also sympathize a little bit with PR people who overall understand and are clear about why it is an outdated, and that's a kind word for it, metric, but are just unable to, despite their best efforts, you know, steamroll of the execs that are, are paying for the work to, to kind of stamp it out. So I think it's a nuanced answer. Our position is quite clear that we strongly recommend, recommend against it, but there are some people essentially being forced against their will to still use it. And it might be one of those things that only disappears as people of seniority maybe potentially age out of yeah. the system and it's just a, a legacy um, a, a legacy measurement. I'd rather call it a legacy statement rather than the measurement or a metric but a, a legacy statement that there is there is absolutely comfort with it because it's been around for so long but as i said maybe there's a there's time of generational change and we've seen it before where things come in and go out of fashion and now we are a far more data driven uh, society mm -hmm. and we understand facts um i think there's certainly the perspective that maybe maybe you know those wheels are turning for some people slower for some mm. faster for others and we've just got to accommodate for that um from the report uh, just just uh you know headline one or two things that 
came out of it and maybe one thing that really surprised you well the first kind of the way we broke it up was in different ways so one of the ways in which we did it as i just mentioned was comparing how people were reporting in 2015 with how they reported in 2021 the full year and um and the starkest difference was in what we describe as activities. So in our methodology, we followed Amex integrated evaluation framework, the various stages of that, to kind of compare how people are reporting in reality to best practice. So in the activities section, which you know relates to the work that's done before things go live. So this is like creating press releases, writing blog posts, um, sending things out for people to review, like the busy work that happens before there's any actual results. There was a huge difference in the way that people were reporting in 2015 to last year. So in all the reports in 2015, about one in five of them uh, mentioned some kind of activity taking place. And in so last year, it was about four in five, so about 80%. And this has really mirrored our experience as we've changed our business over the years. So in the beginning, it was really like a coverage reporting tool. But now, as I said, it's an activity reporting tool. And the reason is that when when you speak to modern PR people, there's very, very few nowadays that say, we just do media relations. Pretty much all of them are offering a usually similar, but a range of different services. So what does that mean? That means, well, if they're offering those services, they need to find a way of reporting back on them and measuring them somehow. And I think that is confirmed by our data, which shows the big difference between how people were measuring their work back then and more recently. So that was one of the key uh, changes that we noticed over time. And was there anything that surprised you from this in that uh, that change between the two periods? Something that you know we had expectations that this was going to be the case because we've seen we've seen how behavior has changed and see how people coming into the industry how their education has changed etc um and platform adoption etc but there was something we didn't that we got that we didn't expect well there was a couple of things i think that one thing we noticed when we we're looking at the data set and it was a big there were only, there were over 400,000 custom kpis created over those years was the nature of those activities changed due to the pandemic. So we saw a lot more mentions of podcasts being created for clients or arranged for clients, guest appearances and podcasts, webinar activity, virtual events, et cetera. Whereas before the the pandemic, there were a lot of real world events happening and far less. So I think as real world events come back into the fray, at least the industry will have learned how to also, you know, manage these kind of virtual events and the other aspect was um just uh an opinion that uh amec had about this kind of activity and i'll read it just a quote from them they said pr professionals can't afford to run the risk of being seen as activity based busy fools which is understandable but the way we look at it is slightly different we think it's a really great thing that over the years pr has gone from pure media relations to a much more diversified offering. I think that's the trend that's set to continue. And I just think it means that the industry is in better health than it's ever been before. So yeah, I think that, that's kind of our, our kind of opinion on that, that kind of category. And when it comes to the weight that people have been putting on output versus outcome and impact, has that changed in some way? Yes. So um, outcome and impact was a very interesting part of the process because um, it, it, it is harder to measure for people. So we can say that with confidence because obviously we have access to hundreds of thousands of reports. People still do struggle when they get up to that end of the scale, like the, the more business critical end of the scale. Um, and just to unpack that a little bit. So in 2015, the number of reports that featured a kind of outcome or impact based KPI was practically zero. It was negligible. We just couldn't find any. In um, last year, it was still very low and we kind of were deciding how to carve up the data. And I think the most interesting data came when we were zooming into the types of organizations with whom the reports were being shared. 
and we broke it down to essentially enterprise organizations and SMEs and also um, kind of independence, but that was a very small amount. And what we found was that there was a greatest proportion of outcome and impact-based KPIs in reports that were sent to SMEs rather than the enterprise. And we, we didn't really know why, we had some inklings. So what we decided to do was embark on like a project of speaking to as many customers as we could who had actually managed to measure these kind of impacts and, and outcomes. And um, there were kind of three themes that became evident, three things that kind of need to be in place to be able to measure those kinds of KPIs. One was um, awareness, we call it. So there's there's a big challenge that a lot of PR people have in that their clients or their execs just don't understand how PR works or what it is. So a lot of time that should be spent um, planning is spent explaining, no, I can't get you on the front page of the FT every week. That's not how, how it works. No, they're not just going to write, they're not just going to take our press release and put it, write it in the, you know, on the front page of the sun, things like that. Too much time doing that, not enough time left to actually sit down and do the, the important work. The second was uh, aim, so setting goals, which was which people find really challenging because at the beginning of projects, especially, this is something we heard over and over again, there's so much pressure just get on with it and start delivering results that often that critical phase is kind of rushed over. Once that's happened, it's kind of game over, really. Your chances of measuring outcomes and impacts are pretty much gone. And then the last one was access, and this was the most interesting one we found. So in order to actually get the metrics and the data back on you know, the number of leads that have been delivered or um, footfall to a shop or you know, these things that need to be measured or the amount raised for charity, whatever your metric is, um, you have to have access to the right people and the right tools from the get-go. And basically, SME, so smaller organizations, are more likely to, to be able to move quickly and grant that access and say, yep, you can speak to the sales team or, yep, you can have access to Salesforce or whatever it is, whereas the enterprise was riddled with problems. So you've got silos. That's something that came up again and again in conversations, privacy concerns, speed of decision making. So basically, um, on the positive side of things, there has been progress since 2015 where there was negligible amounts of reporting in this area. Now there's noticeable amounts, but there are so many challenges on the ground when we actually speak to people. That is still an area that needs a lot of work. Well, Richard, this is truly fascinating and just understanding that element of the work that you did to really truly understand the 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 gray area really contextualizes this um, really well and hey who who would have thought that there are silos within enterprise organizations everyone but now there's the proof of it and i wonder i really wonder if change will come as people become more aware of the pinch points within their organizations um richard time has beaten us we will do we will provide the link to the report and all the details in the description of this episode if people want to find out more about you and get in touch how could they do that well, they can visit us at released.com, which is R-E-L-E-A-S-D, or they can just connect with me, Richard Benson, on LinkedIn. I'd be happy to chat.